Hello and welcome to the Property Roundup on iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon, the show where we chat to industry experts to get a view on new trends emerging. This show is brought to you in partnership with Property District, changing the narrative of the industry. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by John Foley and Emma O'Donoghue, directors at Life Size Plans Leinster. John and Emma, you're both very welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Um, so, John, tell me a little bit about the business, Life Size Plans and Leinster. What is it that you do? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, so Life Size Plans Leinster is a technology lens service that enables people to walk through their plans in a life size scale before they build on site. Very good. I, I actually came across the business uh, from images on LinkedIn, and it's fabulous to see because we know this is technology that is emerging uh, globally, and we know it's something that's been very well received. And uh, over the last number of years through the show here, and certainly through our work with PropTech Ireland and uh, Place Engage, I talk about how difficult it is for non-trained people to be able to visualize a space, to be able to understand. And in fact, it's something we see with self-builders a lot as well, or for people uh, maybe who are buying off-plan or going in to to look at something that's shell and core and not understanding how it can be finished out because the dimensions can be really deceptive. So when I saw your plans, uh, when I saw the images on LinkedIn, I was really excited to see that this is now available in Ireland. So um, because obviously we are we're we're uh, recording an audio, but video as well, I, we will share links to your website, but you might just describe to people the experience of using this as opposed to just looking at a plan. Absolutely. Um, so what, what differentiates ourselves is typically when you take a set of architectural plans, they'll be presented in a file format of, say, a PDF drawing. And the scale on the drawing will either be a scale of 1 is to 50, 1 is to 100 or 200, depending on the size of the, the property. Now, for some individuals in the marketplace, they will potentially have seen architectural plans for the first time in their life. And they typically tend to be the end users of the space. So for end users, it's very difficult sometimes to visualize what the end product is that they're going to get. And there's various tools that will enable them and assist them to go on that journey of understanding what the design is. And um, some of them are like CGIs, virtual augmented reality and uh, visuals to assist them in understanding what you're getting as the end product. Now, for individuals that find it difficult to visualize and to understand what's on an architectural drawing, we decided to bring a service to Ireland that enables people to step into the plan in a true scale. So we have a showroom based in the Kylemore Road, just off Junction 9 on the M50, and it enables people to walk through their plans in a true scale. So when they come in... We will have their furniture, et cetera, in the room. So they'll physically be walking through what their end product is going to be. So you describe people who can visualize, I am that person. I cannot visualize what it is. And so we bring them in and we have an elevator platform. So they will look down on their full design. And then we take them down the stairs. And as we say to them, do you want to walk through the threshold of your home? So they come in and they walk through their house to see, does it function how they want to live? Because everyone has different priorities in a home or in a residential space or in a commercial space. So it's to make sure that it fits how they want to live. I, I yeah. think that's fantastic to see because I know you're talking about the other tools that exist. And I think, you know, going from maybe um, the the architectural drawings through to CGIs, I think CGIs have been very helpful, but, you know, they don't provide a lot of context. I think virtual reality, again, helpful. But um, I, I, I think that that's a, a larger jump for people to make. I personally am a fan of augmented reality because you get to keep the context. But actually, I think walking through your plans at scale is probably the closest you can get to to walking through your home before your home is built. That's one of the questions we keep getting asked is, is it, is it 3D? Is it virtual reality? Is it augmented reality? And, and I think the best phrase that, that we have for it is it is a physical reality. So when you come in and you stand in the space, we bring in artificial walls. We have all of the furniture that you would have in a conventional home. Um, and it gives people that real sense of certainty to be able to see the smallest detail in each of the in each of, each of the various spaces of the home. And um, how did you both come to this? Uh, what's your background? Uh, well, I am a nurse by background, and I've been in management and education roles for the last kind of eight ten years. 
and John has a construction background, which I'll tell you about now. <laughs> yeah, my background is in architectural technology. So I studied in Waterford and uh, went on to study further then in structural engineering. Um, we both left uh, and headed over to the UK then in 2018, where I worked with Langer Oak for 10 years. And we, <laughs> or sorry, 2008, uh, where we worked uh, with Langer Oak for 10 years. And we've only recently come home and um, we... So, saw the opportunity and we really, really like it. And so, yeah, no, I, I think it's great. Whenever I look at founding teams, you know, we're always looking for balance. And um, while architects are great, uh, sometimes there, co- there can be that difficulty in relaying the vision. Whereas actually, I think coming from a nursing background, it's such a transferable skill set into um uh, dealing with people, fast decision making, being able to read the room and gauge the reaction. So actually, is this something that's helping with the communication of people that you have? You have that lovely kind of balance of possibly right and left brain, you know, when you're coming together for clients? Absolutely. And we've been working together in the showroom. And I think, you know, people will resonate with different people. So we, as you said, we read that room and see who they're engaged with most. And then mm. we let them lead this. We, one of us chooses to lead the session. Absolutely. But I think one of the most magical things to see as well is the collaboration that happens in the space. Like only last week we had a client in and he came with his partner, his kitchen designer, builder, an architect yeah. and it was amazing to see the the dynamic the, the dynamic between the team um because everyone has their own agenda that they're trying to fulfill but by having the builder there he was able to pull back the architect in certain areas because he required more space in terms of the plant room and then the kitchen designer is, is focused on different aspects of the build as well and it's just it's it really is fascinating to see and i remember the architect uh, she she was in a very unusual situation because she came to me. She said, I'm so used to processing all of this information in my head. It's so strange to have all of the information on the ground right in front of me. So I thought it was a very unique, um, yeah, a, a unique experience. And it was lovely to see like the, the couple who came in were so excited about their home and they they knew because they're actually going away while the build process is happening. So they're like, we're happy. We know what we're getting when we go away give them the keys. And when they come back, they know what the end product is going to look like. And particularly for in that instance, it was the female. She could not visualize. She was like me. So I totally empathize with her about what she, what she was feeling coming into the space. But leaving, she was completely content. Yeah, I, 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 I think the whole the whole team approach is fantastic. You mentioned your clients there. So um, like I, I, I'd love to just understand a little bit more about who your clients are, because I suppose when I saw this first, I would have maybe made the assumption that the end user would be the person who's going to be living in the property, but that perhaps the client might be the developer. But are you dealing with many self-builders? So there's a whole array of, of of people that kind of fall into our category profile. I think um, for the first year, the primary focus is going to be on the, the like of people doing either a self build, an extension, or a renovation in the domestic market. Now, from my background in the commercial um, in the commercial environment, like the feedback I'm getting from builders, developers, architects, even estate agents, is that they really like the concept of the space. And everyone has a different lens in terms of how they see its application. Um, so it's really been an eye opener for us to be able to see applications for the like of government bodies, landscape architects, interior designers, estate agents. So the application is, I, 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 I think it's, um, it's quite fast. Yeah, it's a very flexible space. And as we said, everyone has a different angle they're coming at. So we're just learning to adapt to what they want when they come into the space. And we're saying to a lot of people, because it's such a new concept, if they want to come in, have some time in the space, we'll go through the capabilities. They can take some time to think about how they might use it. And then they can come back to us after that. Just so that I think you really need to see it. An image does something, but coming in and seeing the space, it you just get lost in it. It's so immersive. You kind of, when we leave at the end of the day and it's bright outside, you kind of forget because it's nearly like being in a cinema inside. <laughs> and just speaking of opportunities to see the space, we actually have an open day on Saturday the 19th of August uh, between 10 and 4. So if there is anyone listening in that that finds this concept interesting and you'd like to see it, meet us and uh, experience what it is to walk through plans in life size, why not come down and see it for yourself? 
Um, I, that that's a fabulous idea. Actually, we'll make sure to make a note of that. Um, an open day on on Saturday, the nineteenth of August. I think it's wonderful that people can walk in. You know, you're you're in Dublin ten there, so it's quite accessible for many people. And um, just in terms of the clients and the use cases, you mentioned two that jump out to me that I'm thinking. Okay, how would they use it? So, landscape architects, how would they mm. use this? Uh, are you? Can you facilitate garden design? Yeah, absolutely. So we can project anything um, onto our onto our showroom floor. So provided we have a scale on a drawing, we can project it. So um, if you've got a garden that you're looking to project, provided like it's to one to one scale, we can project it. We've got a uh, showroom area is 250 square meters. So that's like 16 and a half uh, meters by 16 meters. So it's quite a large size in terms of being able to project. And actually, the colour looks really well within the space, because obviously an awful lot of architectural drawings, they're black and white, they're very basic is the wrong word, but I mean, they're simple. Whereas when you put the colour on the floor, it really pops. So we've been playing around when we started out the business with different di- diagrams and drawings on the on the floor. Mm-hmm. And the garden looks, it looks really well. Because yeah. for, for people who have done their architectural plans of a new build, they have a lot of the garden space done within those drawings. Mm. So we put them down for people and they've really got a sense of it. Yeah. And we've got two elevation walls as well that you can project CGIs or video fly throughs. If you've got a BIM model for, say, your building, we can plug that in and do like a remote screen share onto our large wall projection. So our large wall is like 16 meters by five meters. Mm-hmm. So as you walk with your tr- with your team through your plan, you can have the live model on the wall and start detecting these various clashes or design amendments that need to be incorporated. So it's really good for project project teams to collaborate on and to overcome issues on. Very good. And um, um, actually, that was something I did want to get into there, as in the, the files that you can take on, because obviously we're seeing such um, a huge transition there in terms of digital design um, that you can plug in. It's great to know that you can plug in BIM models, bring them to life in terms of bringing people through. You know, again, I, I really do like going back to the, the concept of bringing in the whole team not just the design team but you know bringing in um the different delivery design partners because that's a fantastic way to make sure that everybody's on the same page so then you're not just depending on digital clash detection and um, that, that you actually are seeing perhaps more basic issues uh before they can even arise how many people can go through the showroom at the same time So we're comfortable to facilitate up to 20 people coming through the space at the same time. Um, The showroom is exclusively the client who books. So what we're saying to people is whoever you think will be beneficial. mm. There is a thing of too many people as well. So, you know, it's who's important, who the decision makers are to have them there. Yeah, what I really, really like about the space is when you come in, it's a very dark space and you really forget your surroundings. You forget where you're located. And for an hour and a half to two hour period, if you're walking to a residential home, you're really immersed in the space and it has everything. It has a very strange way of bringing everyone onto the same page. There's nobody deviating off of topic and it just really focuses everyone to work in in unison um in terms of fees how affordable i like i would imagine this is something that would benefit the industry particularly those you know who are selling off plan or maybe selling um shell and core that they're they're looking to showcase different fit outs and things like that um so i can absolutely see the benefit for the industry but um Talk to me a little bit about the self-builders. Is it viable for people who are looking at their own maybe domestic renovation or self-build uh, the cost wise is it viable for them to do this so how we charge is we charge by time so it's it's 700 euro plus VAT an hour which initially can seem like an awful lot of money but if you think if you were making any changes on site what would you actually get done for that 700 euro so this is going to give you the certainty to not be making changes on the back end and as John said we think most people if they were doing a full build will get through their house in about an hour and a half to two hours for your standard size you know if they were going very large it might take a little bit longer but we think that investment to provide the certainty and that you understand what you're getting, we think it's as a percentage of your build price, it's very, very small. Um, I think I, you get, 
a no, sorry, go ahead. Just, I think a key statistic just to put on that as well, on average for residential uh, clients that walk through the space, uh, the number that we see of fundamental design changes been recorded is between eight and 10. So it is it is definitely something to bear in mind in terms of on the back end of the construction process. I've seen from experience the cost and the time implications on project durations mm-hmm. and, and, and budgets um, to making changes on site. Uh, so if you can bring those fundamental changes to the front end, uh, it makes for a happier builder, a happier client and a happier architect. And a happier outcome. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I listen, that makes absolute sense. And to be fair, if you're talking about, you know, registering maybe eight to 10 changes, if you even think that one of those changes might be a wall at an early start stage of a build, that's less than a day's labor um, in terms of making those changes physically on site so I can absolutely see how that would make sense and um, Emma tell me what uh, of the people who've come through the doors um in the recent weeks since you've opened the new facility what has surprised you the most um what has surprised me the most I think the people who have come through and they're so certain that they know what they're getting and they say I'm only here for my other half they actually make changes so sometimes it can be the opposite way so it's nearly a surprise. When people are in it, they they were so certain about what they were getting. When they're standing in it, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. And they make changes there and then. And it's funny, people get so engaged. I mean, they practice where they'd be cooking and they look at their kitchen and does it flow right? And I suppose it's just, for me, the surprise is just seeing how excited people are and yeah. engaged they are. And the- Yeah, there's something really special about it because it's, 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 it's a thing that, you know, people go through it's such an intimate thing as well you know designing your home and and, and delivering your home that you know it's a privilege to be part of the process really um john for you you're coming from a design background uh i i and you know i had more decades of experience in design how has this changed how you communicate the vision because obviously you're in more of a show rather than tell where it's previously you were probably reliant on being very good at communicating your vision how has that Mm. changed how you've been practicing over the last kind of decade and a half two decades yeah i'll answer that one he has to stand back a little i have to i have to stand back and take my hands off the wheel but emma's very good at telling me how to do that (laughs) that's good teamwork that's good teamwork and by the way this is where you know genuinely when we speak to startups you know we love to see that balance in founders you know you want the different skill sets and you know I often talk about this kind of three-legged stool where you know you want the tech element and um, you want the visionary side but you also need somebody that's a kind of bringing in maybe the financial control and and um, obviously um, life-size plans uh, this is coming in as part of a franchise so how do you feel supported in that actually introducing such a new concept to the Irish marketplace uh, the Australian team have been great to be honest they came over they met us earlier in the year and they spent some time and that time really was to just to get to know us to make sure we were a good fit for their brand and to make sure the relationship was there and then they came back then they did the tra- training with us for a couple of weeks and they're on the end of the phone. It might seem very far that Australia is, but they're there whenever we need them. But equally, they give us the autonomy to work as an independent business, which is great. And the other part that's really nice is dealing with the other franchisees. And we can all exchange ideas. There's, We've been on to Brisbane. We've been on to France. Mm. People who are coming up the journey in Germany, they're coming over to meet us next week. So it's great to have that international experience coming around because everyone thinks about things from a different angle. I actually, I think this really reflects a trend that we've seen, and it's one that we've documented a lot through PropTech Ireland, um, that actually the technology side of, of the built environment is breaking down some of the very natural geographic barriers that we might have had previously. Um, and actually, it's making the work practices different. As we've seen over the past decade, we have a construction industry that's gone from kind of managing peaks and troughs by um emigrating to actually exporting skills you know and, and we've seen this yeah. really grow over the last decade decade and a half so actually there's very little difference between your support team being in Australia as if they were uh, you know on the west coast of Ireland and you were on the east coast and um, so just maybe before we finish up tell me a little bit about the the plans then for life-size plans across Ireland are, are you at the moment you're in Leinster 
but what's what's kind of the vision for the for the business? Yeah, so we've taken the franchise with exclusivity to the island of Ireland. So um, we've decided to call our first location Life Size Plans Leinster. So um, organically, we would like to expand across the the, the other remaining yeah. provinces of Ireland. Um, we haven't put a, an exact timeline on that, but um, our okay. primary focus right now is to make sure that Life Size Plans Leinster gets gets the attention support it requires yeah we we want people to know that this service is here first of all you know it's not something that was there before so we need to create some brand awareness get this up and running and then we'll look at the the next baby as we call it (laughs) well i I, look i i think it's really exciting and as i said to you before we came on air i truly believe you're coming at this at the right time and we know that people have tried to do this uh, back in kind of 2017 2018 2019 the technology wasn't as far advanced and i think covid covid just really made people um take the leap towards digital and that that that's not just in relation to the industry embracing digital but actually consumers being comfortable engaging with the industry in digital because that's something that um, um, you know, because buying your first home is is for many people a once or twice in a lifetime experience. They were happy not to take the same digital approach as they did with other areas of their life, and that really changed during COVID. So it, it to me, it certainly seems like you're coming at this at the right time, but you're also tapping in on something that I think was maybe a frustration for decades. People who just couldn't yeah. visualize what their home was going to be and and it's addressing that and so just I know you've mentioned there in terms of the range of clients you have but say over the next 12 months how are you looking to grow that client base and and really what what are the different client bases will you be focusing kind of more on the the individuals the self builds or are you doing a targeted reach out to the industry yeah, um, I think in the short to medium term, we're very focused on the residential market um, and, and the primary focus is on developing specific partnerships with architects that are delivering uh, to the residential market. Over the course of time, then there is obviously the alternate uses for landscape architects and interior designers to come in uh, to, to, to convey their concept. Um, but o- o- over the course of the medium term, we would see a huge application for our services for government bodies, planning authorities and estate agents to be able to convey their message as part of public consultation processes um, to the wider public. And um, I think that will be a much slower um, client base to, to convert, but we believe that there's huge value there for the end user. Very good. Look, I I absolutely agree with you and I'm delighted to hear that. And I will make sure that I get out myself um, to visit you in the coming weeks. And I would just remind everybody that you are having that open day on Saturday, the 19th of August. What are the opening hours for Saturday, the 19th of August? Um, 10 till 4. 10 till 4. Super. So hopefully people will go along, um, be inspired and maybe even uh, it, it might just motivate them to to bring their plans to life prior to development. So I'm um, really excited to see what happens next for you both. Um, but I look forward to calling in over the next coming weeks to oh, visit absolutely. the showroom. Super. Thank you so much once again. Uh, my pleasure. That was John Foley and Emma O'Dunn, who directors at Life Size Plans Leinster. And uh, thank you again to John and Emma for joining us today. So the business there is Life Size Plans Leinster. And I recommend anybody, both industry and uh, people who are intending to do some renovation on their own building um, or indeed embark on a self-build to check out the offering there. My thanks to show producer Katie Tallon and to the production team at Hear Me Roar Media and huge thanks to our show sponsor, Property District, changing the narrative of the industry. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out all of the other uh, construction and real estate shows from around the world on iProperty Radio. And thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode of the Property Roundup here on iProperty Radio.